Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a retro photo effect in Adobe Photoshop. So to start with, I've opened my image in Photoshop and from the layers panel at the bottom, I'm going to select the adjustment layer icon and select curves. So we're going to create a curves adjustment layer. Now at the top, we have a number of presets. We're going to leave this set at default and we're going to select RGB and from the drop down, select red. Now, if you click halfway along this line, we're just going to drag this up. So we're just going to be increasing the red. Next, select red from the drop down and we're going to change this to blue. Again, click in the middle, but we're going to drag this in the opposite direction. And lastly, we're going to select green and we're going to be creating two points on this line. So just left click once and then again a little bit further along the line. So the first one, we're just going to pull that down. And the second one, we're going to just push that up. So if we go back to our layers panel, we can switch off the effect and then switch it back on. And we can see the effect that it's had. And we can double click here on the adjustment symbol and go back and edit either the red, green or blue as we like. So we can go back and increase the red. And we can adjust the blue again. So you can see how adjusting these points adjusts the color in the image. So we've got our curves layer. Something else we can do is go to the adjustments icon again and create a new gradient adjustment layer. Now by default, this goes from black all the way through to transparent and we can adjust the angle. So we'll start with, let's go for minus 30. So the gradient will start with the black in the top left corner. Now, if we click on this gradient slider here, we can specify one of the presets or we can choose our own color. So let's click on the black and then from the color picker, we can pick a different color. So we can navigate the hue slider here. I think we'll go for somewhere between pink and red and we'll make it fairly vibrant. Once you're happy, click OK. And you can adjust the midpoint of the gradient. So how far this extends into the image. And just keep clicking OK until you're back to the document. So this is how it looks. Obviously, it's a bit too much at the moment, but we can change the blending mode from normal down to screen and suddenly it gives us a very different effect. So if I switch that off, and then you can see the colors coming through in the image. And we can actually reduce the opacity as well. So if we bring this down to 40%, it's a lot more subtle. And we can double click on the thumbnail of the gradient here, and we can go back in and edit that gradient or the angle and these other settings as we need to. We can also duplicate this layer by right clicking and selecting duplicate, giving this a name and clicking OK. So if I give these layers some names and the next one we do, I think will be a purple. So again, we can double click on the thumbnail and we'll just click the pinky red color that we had before and we'll just move this along on the slider a little bit. And we'll click OK and this time we'll swap the gradient around. So it's now going to be affecting the bottom right corner of the image. So this is how it looks on normal, all the way up to 100%. So again, very over the top, a bit too much. However, we change the blending mode to screen and then we can adjust the opacity to make it a little bit more subtle. So if we go for 30% and I can switch that off and then back on. So you can see the effect that it has on the image. And what we can do is with our top layer selected, hold shift and left click on our bottom layer and then press command or control G to group all of these into a folder. And we can double click on the name and give this a name of our choice. So we'll call this adjustments and we can turn all of these off and back on at once. So you can really see that the effect these adjustments have on our original image. 
and you can actually select a blending mode for the whole group or you can adjust the opacity of the entire group. So rather than adjusting the layers individually, you can adjust the opacity for all three adjustment layers at once. And there we go, that's how to create a retro photo effect in Adobe Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you.